Welcome to the Agency X Podcast. My name is John, founder at Avex. Today, I was joined by Lewis, the Agency Partner Manager at Okendo, a Shopify Plus certified app for customer product reviews and user-generated content. Uh, Lewis is a native New Yorker born in Brooklyn and a martial arts enthusiast. Lewis has been in the e-commerce industry for over six years, working from both a digital agency and brand standpoint. He's helped multiple brands assess and implement technology stacks for their digital channels and has created strategic partnership programs to foster collaboration between e-commerce agencies and technology partners. Lewis and I discussed different ways that brands can incentivize customers to leave user-generated content, considerations when choosing new apps and products to install on their Shopify Plus stores, uh, as well as ways to engage with their customers a bit more. So it was a really interesting conversation. I learned a lot about Okendo. I learned a lot about user-generated content, and uh, hopefully we spoke about a few things that merchants can use to start implementing today. Uh, so without further ado, our podcast with Lewis from Okendo. This episode is sponsored by Gorgeous. Gorgeous is the number one e-commerce help desk that lets you manage and respond to messages from your site, social, email, and SMS all in one platform. They have built-in automations to handle common queries like order tracking and save your team time and money. Get a free month by clicking the link in the description and elevate your customer experience today. You're listening to the Agency X Podcast. I'm your host, John Sertakowski, founder and CEO at Avex, a New York City-based e-commerce agency for high-growth D2C brands. As always, I'm joined by our e-commerce strategist, David Anzalone. Our goal is to provide some insight into e-commerce, technology, design, and everything in between. Let us know what you think of today's episode and make sure to visit our website, avexdesigns.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Agency X podcast. Uh, I have Lewis here from Okendo, uh, partner manager. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, okay. specifically agency partner manager for the Eastern United States, but partner manager. Yeah. Awesome, man. No, that's great. Um, would love to learn a little bit more about uh, what you do, uh, so everyone knows, and you know a little bit about Okendo as well. For sure. Yeah. So uh, Okendo is a customer marketing platform with a variety of tools for collecting and showcasing uh, customer product reviews and user generated content on site. And that helps enables brands to really use this content to uh, build shopper trust, drive conversions and maximize customer lifetime value. Um, And in terms of my role on the team, I'm uh, part of the partnerships team. So I work with agencies like Avex to not only support their merchants who leverage Okendo, but also identify new opportunities and also co-market together so that we can mm-hmm. help increase our exposure. Awesome. No, that's great. That's great. Um, and what types of brands should start looking into Okendo? I know we have a lot of brands that are do, using reviews and UGC and like, I think brands nowadays, they see the value in it. Um, But like, when should brands start exploring? Is it startup brands or is Okendo more for enterprise? Like where, where do you guys best work? Like, how do you guys best work with brands? No, awesome question. So what's really great about Okendo is we have a lot of flexibility with our technology. So even startups can use it and enterprise level merchants can use it as well. We see a lot of success with folks in that emerging enterprise bucket. So uh, anyone making like one to like 20 or even 30 million in GMV in that they're, you know, have their feet under them and really starting to scale. What I will say in terms of like that uh, customer who really should uh, or merchant who should consider using Okendo is that anyone who's a direct consumer brand who's really focused on conveying their brand narrative and tapping into and engaging their community base is a great fit for Okendo. So, uh, you know, some folks who are maybe like a larger holding company with 40 brand, like if it, depending on what their uh, goal is for that brand, if it's to tap into that loyalty and engage base, then for sure. But if it's more so like a drop shipping type deal uh, with less of that community engagement, not, not the best fit. Yeah, exactly. Like we've been seeing a lot more, um, a lot more brands focusing on UGC when it comes to either reviews or social proof, things like that. Like personally, when I'm shopping, if I see something with reviews, like I think it was the, you know, I searched for something the other day. Um, I searched for freshly, I think it is. I think it's the meal prep company. So one thing that really stood out to me is that when I searched for freshly right on Google, um, 
an ad at the top result is for Factor 75, which mm-hmm. is uh, a competitor. And they actually yeah. have better ad placement than Freshly. They're, I guess they're just spending more money on that mm-hmm. keyword. But what I noticed was that they actually put, have review stars on their ads sure. and Freshly didn't. So like someone could be searching for Freshly, but then they see, they see a competitor with five-star reviews for a same similar product. That's a good strategy right there because Absolutely. personally, whenever I see those star reviews, especially on Google Shopping and things like on site or whatever, I'm much more likely to be able to click on that. And I do think that there are even big brands that are not doing it. They're not right. pushing the reviews. It's and it's, it's really bizarre that, that even such a big company like isn't doing that yet. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're certified Google partners over at Okendo and we have a whole uh, suite for Google marketing. To your point, uh, using that re- using a robust reviews platform, you're able to uh, push star ratings and a number of reviews to like those Google product listing ads and even like Google rich snippets. And uh, we can even support with Google uh, seller ratings. But mm. uh, to your point, yeah, one of our uh, flagship clients is Skims, is uh, Kim Kardashian Shapewear brand, and we use that to uh, help increase their click through rate and to help increase their return on ad spend because they're more likely to beat their competitors. Uh, if you Google uh, a shapewear suit from Skims, uh, you'll notice that they have the star ratings and reviews up, but the competitor Net-A-Porte, Spanx, huge companies aren't doing that. And they're not leveraging that tactic. So, Yeah, and I also think that it has a lot to do with some of these brands are like legacy brands, like someone like Skims, like right. they're a de- digitally native DTC brand, you know, regardless of, you know, it's backed by a huge influencer, but... <laughs> They're working with, you know, Shopify plus agencies. They're working with agencies and consultants that are more piped in. And, and, and when you're talking about like net a or you're talking about like uh, some of these like legacy um, right. um, retail the locations. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They, first of all, they're probably built on either a custom system or <laughs> they're on something like Salesforce. And to and just even, but yeah. yeah, or just even to just like, <laughs> buy Okendo and install it, you'd have to go through so much red tape. Like we, we deal with some enterprise brands like Hugo Boss and um, Simmons mm-hmm. Bedding. Uh, so like these are multi-billion dollar corporations, great brands to work with. We're super thrilled to be working with them and we do some amazing work with them, but they are a lot slower to make decisions and to move on certain things where a brand that's digitally native DC, they're looking to do things fast, right? Yeah. Some of these bigger companies, they, even though they know it's good, they might just not have it's the resources to be able to, to implement it and, or like bring on a vendor or, you know, buy the product. So Absolutely. the bigger you get, which is great, <laughs> more opportunities, but it's like just so harder to move on certain things. Yeah. And uh, that's like a common problem. And I think a lot of brands are like starting to notice that, like the bigger brands mm-hmm. are looking at the D2C brands being like, hey, we got to move fast because they're eating all of our food. <laughs> yeah, no, and the eyeballs are, are lingering on their ads, you know, and they're so I will say that those larger companies, you know, who are so well established. They are uniquely positioned in that they, depending on the type of company, right? Uh, I'm thinking of like more of like a holding company that owns maybe like nine legacy brands. They're yeah. uniquely positioned to just spin up their own direct to consumer brand. Mm-hmm. You know, they can just create one. They already have the customer insights. They already have that knowledge. They have the production and all, all the logistics already baked in and working. So they can just spin up their own D2C brands and then be a bit more agile without having you know, uh, there's a lot of clout with brand equity, but with how like all the overhead that we're describing, right? So it's just uh, curious to think about. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. And I, I think that a lot of bigger holding companies aren't doing that as much, but they should be. Um, right. I feel like they're also going the other way where like like some holding companies like Mondelez and like these big mm. ones are acquiring those smaller D2C brands and almost doing the opposite where they're like acquiring them because they're like fast and they could get things done and then making them slow <laughs> because now they're underneath that umbrella. So that's, that's you know, going the other way with it, but it's still a common yeah. tactic. So no, for sure. I, I want to get into a few things that, you know, I'd love to pick your brain on as far as um, what some brands can do to kind of leverage either Okendo or UGC or just community in general. So okay. if, if you had, you know, if you could pick a few ways that brands can engage with their community and uh, their customer base, what would it be? What are, what are some of your tips there? 
Yeah, I know for sure. I think especially like by leveraging a robust reviews platform, I think it's key for brands to actually uh, reach out to their customers or, or provide a way for their customers to self-identify mm. uh, and to actually pick what like group they're in, what community are they in. Uh, we have one client here at Okendo called Born Primitive, and they're like a fitness lifestyle brand. And as part of their review capture or like UGC capture process, they're figuring out what types of uh, activities or what their customers like to do with their products. So do you like to do yoga? Do you like to hike? Do you like to do MMA? And having their customers self-identify makes it so much easier to segment your uh, marketing base and actually uh, like really create specific campaigns for that customer. So if there's a customer who self-identifies as a yogi and loves yoga, you know, you can create a, a yoga event and invite them to it and be like, hey, we're also going to have a pop-up shop and, you know, it's going to be 25% off at the pop-up shop and it's going to be personalized for, for yoga enthusiasts. So really just reaching out to your customers already engaged and figuring out, you know, what groups are on is huge. And it, I guess I kind of taken it back, uh, really reaching out to your customers where they are. So, of course, you've probably heard this a million times, but it's just so key, like really understanding, not just emailing them over and over and over again, you know, using different channels like social media, using collaborations with other brands that they also purchase with. So it's more cohesive and seamless is huge. Um, and I think one last tactic uh, brands might be able to use to really like engage that customer base is like by letting them tap into different incentives that you're already offering or different promotions. So it could be like uh, if they got a referral discount from their friend, let them overlay that with uh, the discount code that they got for signing up uh, for the newsletter. You know, it's really mm -hmm. like it's, it's going to increase their loyalty and their likelihood to convert. And uh, you could even then tap them in to leave user generated content after that or for referrals or to, you know, uh, beta test their product. So really just engaging that customer, giving them a bit more value will help you increase your overall lifetime value. No, that's great advice. And uh, yeah. one of the things you said, the first um, tip that you mentioned is is kind of engaging with your, with your customers and speaking with them. One thing that is super easy to do, and I'm surprised more brands aren't doing it. I, I think it was Glossier who mm. did it first, Glossier or whatever. Um, they did it I heard of them doing it. Maybe they're not the first, but I've heard of them doing it. And I wish more brands would do this. And I, I swear, I tell like every single one of our clients about this and I feel like no one does it, but putting together a Slack channel for VIP yeah. customers, like invite them Huge. to your loyalty program or whatever it is, or just reach out to them. Hey, you reached, at, you could even yeah. do this with, um, like, like Discord or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or Discord. Not, so you're going to talk about that for one. Yeah, I yeah, know, like Discord or yeah. Slack or whatever yeah. it is. Like you can actually, like in say in Shopify Plus, when somebody reaches a certain purchase quantity or order amount, they bought from you a certain amount of times. There could be an automatic tag. Um, sure. You could even use you know, like Clavio, which I know integrates really well into Okendo. You yeah. can have something in there that like sends them an alert to sign up for this VIP Slack channel where they just get invited, and then. You could ask them things, send out surveys, give them special discount codes for answering questions, maybe get product feedback from them. They're your most loyal customers. Engage with them one-on-one -on -one and you could get an insane amount of basically free feedback um, from like almost like a focus group. And, and, and these are people who are fans of your brands. Instead of just looking at data and analytics um, mm -hmm. or send, like you said, sending mass emails out all the time really engage with them one-on-one -on -one a bit. Um, but I do love the idea of, you know, how can you segment better? How can you um, engage with the customers better? And if they are leaving reviews, like how do you respond to them in a more efficient way, uh, looping in some of these other tools? Because yeah. I know that like, you know, I know Okendo integrates with Klaviyo. What other are, are some of the popular apps that integrate with uh, Okendo as well? For sure. Yeah, I would say, of course, our gorgeous integration is huge, uh, mm -hmm. sort of in, in line with uh, all the other uh, feedback that we're getting about engaging with your customers. Uh, it, it makes it so that uh, basically you can respond directly to a review either and leave that publicly on the product details page so that other mm -hmm. customers can see it. Or if it's a more you know, high touch concern, it can be a private message and you can create automated filter, like rules. So basically, uh, let's say if uh, any, any two star review that comes in, uh, into your pending folder for your moderation tab, 
you can have that automatically populate a help desk ticket in Gorgeous so that the CX team wow. can action that. And so it's just a lot of automation there. That's yeah. awesome. And that, that mm -hmm. would spark so many ideas for me because I know with like Gorgeous, and that's the one I was actually going to bring up, but um, oh, yeah. I'm glad <laughs> you did. Um, Gorgeous, uh, I know like you can set up automations to like automatically respond or alert right. you when people leave comments on social. So like there's so many things that you could do to engage your community between like reviews, customer experience with Gorgeous, Clavia on the email marketing side. Like and even that, SMS, yeah, for SMS. sure. So yeah. like in that case, even if it is automated, it still feels very still one-on-one. -on -one. They feel like it's a good customer experience. So a bad review could get put into a queue or even a bad comment on social could be put into mm -hmm. a queue and Gorgeous. Um, and then, you know, even good reviews, you could even respond to and say, hey, sure. thanks for that. Here's here's a 10% 10% discount yeah. automatically when you leave, you know, you left a good review. So, or maybe they join that that Slack channel, that Slack exactly. community, or the Discord community. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So much you could do there, and I think it's a matter of like brands just sometimes need to know that they can do these things, um, but also having to, the time to do it. Some of these smaller DTC brands just don't have the resources for it. And that's where yeah. you know, we want to work together to help support them as well. I will um, on that point, John. I will. Say, I, I used to do. That's actually how I got my foray into ecom. I, I was mm -hmm. doing customer experience for Becca Minkoff. Awesome team. Uh, but at most, we I think we like hovered around like four to six CX uh, folks, and then we'd have like one manager and like a VP who also did like wholesale customer service and led that team. Um, really awesome, and we were always trying to innovate, innovate, innovate. But then we found that because of the bandwidth, we weren't able to do things like at the time. This was like <laughs> groundbreaking at the time, but ecom evolved so fast. We were trying to implement live chat, and we've been one of the first. Uh, yeah. you know, CX teams to do live chat, but we were just like, we can barely keep up with phones and emails, you know, yeah. the man of the product. So to your point, you know, that Slack channel, that Discord community seems awesome, but you almost need like a dedicated community you manager do. for it, yeah. right? So, you do, you do. Uh, yeah. And totally it has to be that. someone who understands the brand and can almost like speak in the brand voice because you don't want to piss people off either. Right. Like, so it has to, it has to be aligned. Um, you know, that said, we spoke about Clavio, Okendo, Gorgeous, things that kind of all work in the Shopify Plus ecosystem for e-commerce. Um, you know, what are some things that brands should consider uh, when evaluating some of these third-party applications, whether it's UGC or email or anything else? No, awesome, awesome question. Yeah, and I uh, prior to joining Okendo, I was uh, working for uh, One Rockwell, who's also a Shopify Plus partner, and you know, it was getting this question a lot from from merchants evaluating, uh, you know, new website migrations, etc. Uh, I would say for like one of the priorities that they should consider is uh, the type of uh, performance impact the third party mm -hmm. application could have on your site from a site speed optimization. Site speed has a huge, huge impact on your conversion rate. So you can build the most beautiful, engaging website, but if it doesn't load, or people are going to bounce. Uh, and I would say a, a company called Yoda, uh, Y O T T A. It's really great. They they put out this uh, report once a year. Uh, it's uh, called the Performance Index, where they mm -hmm. review all types of third-party applications and they rate their performance impact. Um, and also ask the technology company like what sides their headless view npm packages like for example and oh kendo is just 14.4 kilobytes so little to no performance impact so really just using those resources out there like that yoda report asking technology partner what their package size is and have they had any issues with the performance impact is huge um some some other tips is understanding what type of resources you would get from the technology partner you know like do they have live support or is it just like an email center? Do you have a dedicated success manager? Uh, do they have, you know, what are the protocols to your point uh, if there's an emergency or a red flag? Uh, and is anything, uh, you know, in terms of like timeline, how long would it take to integrate the technology? Um, let me see, what are some other things? I, I would also just kind of figure out like what's in their roadmap. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we would see this a lot when we were uh, scoping out projects over at 1R and it's just like uh, brands were willing to pay thousands of dollars to custom build something and we would just let them know like, hey, our partner's working on this. It's in their roadmap for the next quarter. You can save 10, 15, 20 grand if you just wait a couple months. Uh, so really just asking the technology partner like, hey, what features do you have coming up and coming? And it can mm -hmm. help you save money by not customizing or maybe you don't need to purchase a separate third party app because the feature will be covered. Um, yeah. yeah, no, that's great. Great advice. I mean, I think the performance is the biggest thing because I, I, sure. we, 
especially with smaller brands, I feel like a lot of times we'll, we'll get a company that's like, they just grew, you know, maybe they went from startup to now they're doing three to 5 million or something. And they, and they, you know, we're surviving with like a pre-made theme and they have like 50 apps installed. And it's like, they're like, my site is so slow. We need to redesign it. I'm like, I was like, well, I can tell you why. And you know, sometimes brands, they're just when the smaller team, they need like these yeah. quick solutions and they're just installing like apps like crazy. So that's good to know that the package sure. charge is really small. And that's a good question to ask. And just being, you know, intentional with what you're adding to your store, no, understanding that yeah. everything that you add is going to, in most things that you add are going to impact load time. And even when you uninstall something, it leaves behind some code, which can yeah. keep it bloated and keep her, her performance. So like, it's really important that you do that research. Um, and you, you try to be mindful of who created the app, what the reviews are for it, you know, if, if it's going to impact load time. And I do like the idea as far as roadmaps go, is like understanding what product, what's going to yeah. be released in the near term, long term, where, you know, what are some of those things that they could look forward to? Because that also might interest a brand in or interest a merchant into buying that product because they're like, oh, maybe this isn't out now, but next quarter it will be. So let's get ramped up on it and get prepared for this new release that might be coming out. So understanding what that roadmap is. I also think that, you know, we didn't talk about price too. I think that's something that they they need to evaluate and see oh, that's yeah. important. <laughs> For sure. You know, also just because something is more expensive doesn't mean that it has more robust features either, no. right? And right. just because something is cheaper doesn't mean that it's going to be the perfect solution too. Just because it's it's in your budget range. So, yeah. figuring out what your monthly fees are is important across all the different products that you're adding to your store and then really like putting them side by side and saying, well, yeah, this product costs so much more and it has more features, but I'm not even using some of them. So like understanding what you need the core technology for exactly. and, yeah. and can the, can the, the, the product grow with you? Like if you go yeah. from three to 30 million and you need some more robust features, is that product going to grow with you and scale with you? So I think yeah. that's, that's also uh, important to, to touch on as well. Absolutely. And even if it's going to like, if you're going to scale internationally, you know, do they support the languages? Do you, do you oh, have yeah. to pay more money for more stores, et cetera? And I will, on that same vein, uh, really understanding what that technology application integrates with, like, the, is it, does it play along with the rest of your technology stack? I mean, maybe there's even like a bundled offer that mm-hmm. it might have that you could use it as a negotiation tactic for leverage. So, yeah. you know, understanding where they fit in the ecosystem and, and do they collaborate well, you know? No, that's all super important, mm-hmm. all really important. Um, now, when it comes to user-generated content, uh, whether it's reviews or uh, social proof or putting things on the site, you know, what are some recommendations you might have for uh, merchants to incentivize their customers to be able to produce some of that content? Because I know that, I'll be honest, I don't really leave reviews too much. And I, a lot of people tend to leave bad reviews more often because they, they <laughs> want to write a review or like post something when yeah. they're upset. But when they're thrilled, they're less likely to do it. So how can merchants mm-hmm. kind of incentivize their customers to um, to leave a review or post something? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we've seen a lot of merchants leveraging uh rewards in the form of coupons or loyalty points in order to incentivize folks. So you can envision with that uh, review request email that gets fired up, it would be like, hey, if you leave this review, you can get a 10% discount or a certain amount of loyalty points, et cetera. And what we'll do at Okendo is we'll actually dynamically increase that incentivization based off what uh, step they're in uh, that review process. So step one, where they're writing you know, the review itself, leaving a star rating, et cetera, it might be 10%. And it will kind of uh, entice that customer to uh, leave a picture or leave a video uh, by offering a, a larger discount. So it's having it dynamically increased in incentivization to keep the customer engaged and keep them moving along the process. Uh, back to like our original point where we were speaking about engaging with your customer, like you, brands could ask their customers like, what kind of incentive would make you likely to leave a review, right? Like, hey, uh, do you want like a discount or, or would you be more interested in like a free gift with purchase on your next order or like free shipping, you know? Like you just mm-hmm. like engaging with your customer and figuring out what they want, like what motivates them. Uh, customers are pretty vocal. And I would also say like figuring out ways 
to to reward your customers outside of the the standard incentivizations is key. Like like offer to give them like free uh, beta test access to product and then leave a review on that. You know, rather than just the UGC on what they purchase. Like, hey, we know you you bought our joggers uh, and you left a review on that, or maybe they didn't engage. We're actually beta testing shorts using the same fabric. Uh, we like we'll send you a free pair or whatever, and then if you can leave user generated content. Uh, it's really great for like micro influencers as well who have that type of like a customer base or uh, an audience base under them. Um, so really just engaging with the customer, figuring out what will incentivize them, offering variety, and then dynamically increasing the reward to keep them engaged and to keep them moving along in the process. Yeah, and and I think one of the, the things to do there too, um, when you're actually sending out the request to write a review, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's ways to change the delivery time of like that notification um, in Okendo. And I'd be, I I would advise brands to test how that, um, test the time that you're sending it to, because sometimes it's, maybe it's good to get it like right after the, they buy the product. Sometimes it might be good a week later or a few, a few weeks later after they've used the product enough to really like it and leave on honest review. Uh, but I do love, of course, rewards and like VIP offers and ways to incentivize them to be able to, to, to leave some UGC. So I think that is, yeah. that's like almost like a no brainer. I think there's also ways to um, utilize SMS too there. Um, oh, so totally. Yeah. How can yeah. you send out a, a flow that's going to bring them back to write a review, but also use it as an upsell opportunity or a cross sell opportunity. If you have a comparable product that's going to pair well, if they liked it, they leave a good review. How can they, you know, get them back to the site to, to, to buy more? Um, so I, I, I think sure. there's, there's, you know, there's return on investment there. It's it, now you have, now you have a piece of content that a customer brought that's going to help you increase sales. And you might even get them to buy more from you from bringing them back to, to your website. So there's so much opportunity Absolutely. there that I think there's a lot of a lot of money being left on the table with some of these brands who are, are not right. executing on some of those things. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I will like going back to that integration with Clavio, you know, like Okendo, we really focus on creating the best customer product reviews uh, technology out there. But uh, we really use Clavio and our integration together as a powerhouse for email marketing. Like that way you can A-B test your review request emails and any of those design elements that you already built out in Clavio, you can bring over to those, those review requests. So it isn't like this weird one-off uh, email that has minimal design. It's the same elements that you use across all your email marketing campaigns. Um, and to touch on that SMS uh, portion, uh, leveraging SMS with email together I don't know if you can hear an ice cream truck in the background. Sorry about that. It's, it's a good. little bit it's of Brooklyn for you. Maybe you want um, some ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can leverage the t- technologies together to increase your your uh, the likelihood of you getting the review in the, per- in the first place. So, for example, if you have access to a brand's, uh, I mean, a customer's number, uh, you can send them the review request through e- uh, text. If not, it will automatically fire it through email, you know, or vice versa, et cetera. Awesome. No, that's great. That's great. Some really great tips there um, uh, across the board. So uh, just before we wrap up, a couple of things to, to cover. Um, some tips on engaging with your community, engage with the customers, find out where they are, talk to them, whether you're using Gorgeous or Slack or inviting them to VIP channels. Uh, Another thing as far as like you need to do your research as a merchant when you're looking into apps to add or SaaS products to add to your store, you know, just don't start adding random things. You want to do your research. How does it affect performance? What's their technology roadmap and how uh, is that going to impact your business? What's the cost short term and long term? And can it scale with you? Is it going to grow with you? Which I think is super important. Uh, And the last thing that we touched on as far as as incentivizing customers, you want to be able to offer them rewards, whether it's VIP or discounts, depending what, you know, what what matches your brand Uh, and also test, 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 test and test again, you know, like what, can you test the times that it's sending? Can you test different things with SMS and email uh, and just really do AB testing across the board to see what's performing the best. I think these are some really great takeaways when it comes to UGC and when it comes to engaging with the community uh, and incentivizing people to be able to uh, produce uh, user generated content. So uh, awesome. 
Really great, man. Did you want to touch on anything else? Uh, I think we hit it all out of the park. I would say if there's uh, anyone who's interested in learning more about Okenda or continue the conversation, you know, reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Louis Espinal, or, or you can reach out to me via email. It's just louis.espinal at okendo.io. Awesome. So thanks yeah, for having me, John. Yeah, sure. of course, man. Thanks for coming. We'll put the links in the description awesome. and in the comments mm-hmm. and stuff so people could check out Okendo. Uh, and of course, we're Okendo partners as well. So it would be uh, if anyone has any questions about Okendo, we're happy to give our opinion and be able to help with any integrations or custom setups. Uh, thanks so much, Louis. Really appreciate you having today. And uh, I'll talk to you on LinkedIn. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, John. Right. Thank talk you. soon. Bye.